Revelation 7. The suspense is killing me. Are we going to open up the final seal? Will we get to see what the scroll says? Will it tell us to drink Ovaltine? Let's find out. I'm just kidding. We're not gonna open the seventh seal yet. That's next chapter. This chapter is just a bottle episode to fulfill the word count quota, I assume. It's about God's plan of salvation while he's in the middle of judging everyone else. And he's gonna need some help from his angel friends with the eyeballs. Because only two groups of people will survive the chaos. The 144,000 evangelists on earth and everyone they save. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on any tree. Let's just stop there and admire the phrase, the four corners of the earth, because there are people who want us to take this book literally, because there are people who treat the Bible as a science textbook, because people who are elected to office often take their oath with a hand on this book. And here we are just openly talking about a flat, rectangular Earth. An Earth that's small enough, apparently, that the four creepy-ass angels can just take their positions on the corners. No word on how they arrived there. Did they fly? Did their servants drag them there? Do they just warp? No clue. But at least they're blocking the wind, excuse me, all four winds, from blowing anywhere. <laughs> Gotta hit pause on the whole atmosphere thing. You would think God could have just prevented the wind if it mattered, since he knows how to destroy mountains. But nope, we're using the eyeball creatures to create a wind blockade with their bodies, which are eyeballs. Because that's how you block wind, by doing this. Also, if these creatures are on the corners of the flat earth, where do they think the wind is coming from? I don't think they're familiar with the concept of outer space yet. Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or the sea, or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. I appreciate that this new angel gets a literal stamp of approval from God so you know he's legit and not one of those rip-off angels. I also like the line about how we shouldn't harm the land or sea or trees. There's an argument to be made that this means we need to protect the environment. And yet most white evangelical Christians reject the idea of climate change and support things like oil drilling. If only they ever read this book. Then again, maybe not. The line says you can't harm the environment until after all of God's servants are branded on their foreheads, like with a face tattoo. But after that's done, screw the earth. If I wanted to trick Christians, I would totally brand my own forehead with God's symbol. How would they know the difference? How many servants are there? 144,000, exactly. I know that sounds like a number that's rounded, but nope, it's that many on the dot. Imagine how bad you'd feel if you were number 144,001. Just missed out, buddy. Have fun getting tortured for eternity. Obviously, that number has special significance for Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons who take it very literally and believe they are among the chosen. And wouldn't you know it, there are 12 tribes of Israel. And you'll never guess how many members of each tribe are counted among these 144,000. From the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. From the tribe of Reuben, 12,000. From the tribe of Gad, 12,000. From the tribe of Asher, 12,000. From the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000. From the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000. From the tribe of Simeon, 12,000. 
from the tribe of Levi, 12,000. From the tribe of Issachar, 12,000. From the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000. From the tribe of Joseph, 12,000. From the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000. How funny would it be if just one of those tribes got only 11,999 members through? There would be so much speculation about what little Billy did. Stupid hellbound Billy. By the way, what happened to the tribes of Ephraim and Dan? They existed once. Oh well, hell for them too. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Run, Johnny. Run, my dude. Run while you can before they capture you. The great multitude here seem to be people who are not among the 144,000, but they're still in heaven, before the throne. If that's the consolation prize, seems fine to me. What are the perks of being one of the chosen few if everyone else seems to get access to God? Interesting side note. You may be familiar with the song, When the Saints Go Marching In. It's actually an old black spiritual made famous by Louis Armstrong, and the lyrics include these lines. Oh Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. I don't sing. They're talking about these verses, longing to be one of the chosen 144,000. In fact, if you read the lyrics to the song, and there are a lot of lyrics. There are so many references to these chapters of Revelation, including mentions of the stars falling from the sky, the moon turning red with blood, the trumpets sounding their call, and the horsemen beginning to ride. You will never hear that song the same way again. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. This is not exactly the point, but those four living creatures were last seen standing on the corners of the earth preventing any wind from getting through. How would it be possible for these angels to stand around them? There's nowhere for them to go, except off the cliff of the flat earth. But okay, everyone got caught and they're all worshiping God. Everyone in these tribes is a winner. But there is a problem. Now there's no one left to convert. This should be an existential crisis for all the Christians whose entire spiritual lives are centered around saving people. There's nothing left for them to do now. What are they going to make music or movies about now if there's no enemy to convert? They need people like us. They are dependent on non-Christians. They should be thanking us all the time. That's what church should be, just a weekly gathering place where they thank atheists for making their lives worthwhile. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? Yes, I too am wondering this. I'm also wondering why this elder doesn't seem to know, because this seems like one of the things he definitely should know. Maybe he should check the seal on the wrapper. Aren't all these people branded on their foreheads? How funny would it be if the response was, Come on, man. You know. You know. I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple and he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. 
He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Is it weird that the same guy who just asked where these people came from just delivered a monologue answering his own question? Because that's weird. Anyway, the elder is quoting the Bible, the Bible he's currently a character in, and saying they will always be spiritually and physically fulfilled, and the sun won't beat down on them, which we already knew because the last time we heard about the sun in the previous chapter, it had been reduced to blackness. Also, remember when the stars fell from the sky and the sun is a star, so it must have been destroyed? <laughs> Again, that was the last chapter. There is some significance to him saying these people came out of the Great Tribulation. That implies they were not raptured with the original group. They came to Jesus afterwards. They had rejected him before that. So this is like the new wave of Christians. They are latecomers to the cult of white robes and synchronous chanting. I know we are meant to think this is bliss, but you can't enjoy worship if it's your entire life. It's like moving to a tropical paradise. Eventually, it just becomes home and you start to notice the problems. It's great for a few days, or, or a week, but for eternity? No thank you. As the saying goes, you don't know what you got till it's gone. But this passage says it's never gone, which means they can't really appreciate it. Also, God will wipe away their tears? Are those tears of happiness? Maybe. Or maybe they realize they have to worship this malevolent God for all of eternity. I would be crying too. And did God wipe away every tear from their eyes? Like in the future too? Because eradicating an emotion like that seems messed up. I would like access to my full range of emotions in the afterlife, please. Only 144,000 people get saved. I mean, there are billions of people in the world now, and that includes a couple billion Christians. The vast majority of them believe they are saved, even though they are not. Every pastor is lying to them. And you just know there will be pastors who say they'll move you up on the list if you just donate some money. I hope you notice that we still have no idea what the scroll says. The cliffhanger still has not been resolved.